Hello, this is D and I'm back with another video. Ever since NVIDIA announced their overclock scanner tool for the RTX and GTX line of GPUs, I've been frothing at the mouth to give this a try. Unfortunately, when the X1 Precision software launched, there was no GTX support to be found. They simply said it would follow in a future update. This morning, EVGA released an update to their beta 0.2.8. So being the impatient person that I am, I decided to give it a whirl even though it said that GTX GPUs were not supported. To my surprise, it actually worked. It adjusted the frequencies and adjusted the voltages accordingly, and I was able to get a stable overclock that stood up to the benchmarks that I threw at it. Now, I'm gonna show you guys how you can do this today, and of course, this is a workaround. Your mileage may vary. I only tested this with a GTX 1080 Ti, and it was successful for me. I'm not sure if it will work out for you, but of course, you guys can let me know in the comment section below. The first thing you're going to download is EVGA's Precision X1 beta software 0.2.8 and of course I'm going to leave a link for that in the description down below and you're also going to need the latest Afterburner beta that has support for NVIDIA's overclocking scanner tool. I also will leave that in the description down below and last but not least you're going to need to have a benchmarking tool. I use 3 d Mark, and TimeSpy is my program of choice. First, we're gonna open up our Afterburner app and we're gonna adjust a fan curve on it. Unfortunately, the Precision X1 beta has no fan support for GTX GPUs, so we're going to have to adjust it in Afterburner. Next, we're gonna open up the Precision X1 software. You will see a button that says Scan. You will hit the Scan button and it will take roughly about 10 to 15 minutes to spit out a result. Once the result is out, you will see it on the side there and it will say plus 130 plus 140 whatever is the max that they were able to achieve on your GPU at the bottom there you will also see a pass or a fail if it passed you want to apply this profile and the next thing you want to do is save it next we're gonna open up our afterburner and as you can see in the corner there there is a curve applied now you want to adjust your fan profile accordingly here because this will be a permanent overclock unfortunately the x1 software does not overclock memory so if you do want to do that you will have to do that manually now after you apply your fan curve make sure that you put your power limit to the full and once again save this in the afterburner app now of course we want to see if these overclocks are stable so we're going to open up our benchmark program of choice and run some tests like i've said earlier your mileage may vary i ran the benchmark four to five times and each time the results were within 10 to 15 points apart now i got a score of 9606 overall compared to 9578 with my manual overclock now let's go down to the graphic score when i manually overclocked my gpu i achieved a higher graphic score of 9,885 compared to 9,828. Now it's still a very close score, but naturally you want to manually overclock your GPU for the optimal result. I think these results are really good. As you can see, when I manually overclocked, I got 1,962 megahertz compared to the one-click solution of 1,936 megahertz. Now this is excellent for those that don't want to tinker with the voltages. They just want to overclock their GPU and get into their games. This is a great solution and I can't wait till EVGA has full support for GTX GPUs. Now if you want to get this up and running in the meantime, you can use the steps that I laid out in this video and it should run on your GTX line of GPUs. Now once again, I want to know if this works for you guys, so please leave it in the comment section down below and like I usually say, please like, share and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys on the next one.